Welcome, I welcome everybody joining us, the Media Center and the Ukraine Forum are beginning our work. Today's briefings will include on at 14.30, we will have uh, a um, online briefing with the spokesperson for the Air Force of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. Now we will be talking about the export of Ukrainian culture. It is hosted by the Deputy Minister of Ukraine for Culture and Information Policy of Ukraine. We would like her to tell us what the ministry is doing in this very important area. This is the high time that the Ukrainian culture should be exported throughout the world. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. What I would like to talk about this afternoon, one of the priorities in the national project of restoration of Ukraine is export of culture. What does that mean? The presence of Ukraine in the cultural area of other countries is not uh, empty words. It's very important. Ukraine is on the first page of the newspaper and other media, and we know why. However, the situation might have been different, I'm sure, if the Ukrainian culture could have used its potential in full scale over these years. It means how we are perceived by other countries, how we are seen abroad. The culture is always a preventing effort preventing crises and wars. It promotes sharing of ideas and self-recognition. This is why we believe this is the most prioritized issue of our activities as well as of other ministries, including the general sector of culture. I am talking about what I am responsible for cultural projects. To be successful abroad, you don't only need rapport, you have to be well versed in international law and the liking of the public abroad. This is where I think we are falling short of the target. The cultural sector over the past months has shown itself more successful and to proceed on the growth of these potentials, we will have to work on exchange of best experience and consultative work from our foreign friends. Since February, the ministry has been acting as an cultural agents for our artists. We have, prom have been promoting, helping in um, disseminating this kind of information together with our embassies. For example, the, the Biennale in Italy was very successful, and it was no coincidence that uh, it um, began on the outbreak of war. Kyiv Symphony Orchestra has been touring European countries, and they made a performance at the Prado Museum in Mad Madrid when NATO summit was taking place. The Ukrainian Freedom Opera together with the Metropolitan Opera and the Warsaw Opera that I was the privilege to inaugurate. They have their program items in different cities, including Amsterdam, and it will be, they will be finishing the performances at Lincoln and Kennedy Center in the United States. We have been cooperating with the Museum of Modern Art in New York with their project and innovation one that we have launched our work together. The Ukrainian pavilion at the triennial event will be featuring quite a wide range of 
items, including the works by the Ukrainian artists. We have been also been working on the exhibition in London of Ukrainian ceramics. This is a joint effort with the Ukrainian National Museum of Art and Decorative Arts. You will remember the so-called Ukrainian hen. And I would like to draw your attention to the most powerful project that have seen the light of the world were of the light of the day. For example, the theater at the left bank in Kiev and the Dach Daughters project there, absolutely successful project of Dance Macabre in Paris and the exhibition uh, called um, the, the, the house taken hostage. It was featuring the works of the Ukrainian artists since the beginning of the full-scale war. We have a number of other projects in Vienna and uh, in Amsterdam. And it, we are trying to keep a record of these successful stories. And we have now enumerated more than 500 ballets, photograph exhibitions, etc., around the world. The mainstream musicians are not lacking behind. We all know about the Kalush Orchestra in this in this year. The Glastonbury uh, event saw four Ukrainian bands, apart from Dacha Bracha. We also uh, have shown them the other Ukrainian bands. In uh, August, we will also see a number of um, features, including Burning Man in the United States. This perhaps will lead to the change in acceptance of Ukraine and the idea of the Ukrainian challenges and our visage of the future. We are now candidates for the EU membership. And to have a full-scale voice, we are bound to have a program of promoting Ukrainian culture abroad. We are meant to work on this domestically as well as internationally. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Madam Deputy Minister. I think everyone would ask you about this. We saw yesterday something that perhaps says about the challenges that you are facing. The exhibition that is taking place in Europe now, the armaments that have been destroyed by the Ukrainian armed forces. This exhibition is traveling powerfully in different European countries. But we also saw yesterday that Germany banned such an exhibition in Germany. Why do you think you're facing some challenges? Indeed, there is a war fatigue that is taking place. We all know about this. Sometimes Europeans are not willing to see what is not aesthetically acceptable, but to be uh, impatient with us. And we are sometimes here that this is a politically charged project. That's why when we speak in the language of peaceful project, such initiatives are accepted more um, gladly. Peter Welkin, the leader of the New York Metropolitan and the main director, told us that we should speak the language that is common to the Europeans. Of course, we should stress how much we need the new weaponry, but at the same time, and at the other hand, this agenda will not sustain for a long time. What, sooner or later, we will have to speak the language of cooperation and mutual understanding, and we should press the point of who has caused this current barbaric war. Questions from the ground. Tvachuk Svetlona from Ukraine form a series of questions. 
Now we'll go one by one. The first one has to do with the plan of renewal. This plan says that in order to promote the cul culture of Ukraine abroad, you will engage foreign students teach studying in Ukraine who are studying at different cultural institutions here. Could you tell us whether our educational establishments are ready to enroll foreigners and how that progress will be promoted? In the first place, I will tell you that the competence of engaging foreign students, of course, lies within the remit of the Ministry of Education. The area of artist, artistry and artistic events is very special, and we think there is a demand abroad for the Ukrainian educational institutions, but we are also aware that in the wake of two years of COVID, this, uh, this education is taking place primarily and exclusively online. We have gained some expertise here, and it is clear that to get some skills, you will have to go for your education to Ukraine. We realize that the intake of foreign students will uh, be less, but it will not be minimal, because it is also a matter of uh, getting some foreign currency and also promoting Ukrainian educational system throughout the world. And we have to come to terms with these realities. On the other hand, we say that the Ukrainian students living abroad now, those who have left the country uh, as fleeing the war, they are studying abroad, and the intake campaign is now taking place. And we see that the entry campaign is taking place, and our students are actively engaging in that, and they are willing to get their education in the framework of the Ukrainian educational system. You know the problems we are seeing in the city of Kharkiv. We'll be working on that in terms of providing their education in other cities, but that will be basically a Kharkiv University. As for the movie industry, what was the impact of war on the movie industry? Perhaps you are shooting some movies now. There are some, perhaps, projects of cooperating between the Ukrainian directors and the foreign ones. Of course, we are talking about uh, the Ministry of Culture and Information Policy. What we are seeing is this. The Ministry of Culture is receiving a lot of requests for the Ukrainian directors to go abroad and film the movie there. At the same time, people want to come to Ukraine to make documentaries. We might think about the artistic movie that perhaps will carry a lot of birth. The U U Ukrainian movie industry have um, launched a project of cooperation between U Ukrainian artists and the foreign ones in the Cannes Festival. The first step was taken, some agreements were signed, and to the best of my knowledge, there is a powerful work taking place. At least my meeting with the Ministry for Culture in France has been a positive one. They're standing with us in terms of are promoting the Ukrainian movie industry. As for the Russian culture, it is well known that some world organizations, both European and American ones, are continuing their cooperation with the Russian artists, and they are reflecting and broadcasting Russian products. What is the reason for that, and what does your ministry do in terms of calling to boycott the Russian culture. The call to boycott the Russian culture was issued on the 26th of February on our website, and it has been joined by hundreds of organizations throughout the world, the concert halls, festivals, and other cultural projects. However, it's not an easy thing to ban that. Russia has been 
investing in those cultural resources a lot of money. You will remember the interview by Minister, the Mr. Piat Piatrovsky, who said that they are fully aware of the Im impact of culture. And you know, it's very difficult for us to sustain our effort to cancel Russia, because it is viewed and deemed as a nationalistic project. We think it is better to come up with something authentically Ukrainian so that our artists would have their own possibilities, platforms, places to promote their own cultural agenda. La Scala will open this season with Boris Godunov opera, and we will be writing to them. Of course, the project cannot be canceled or stopped, but we are in power to voice our position. The Salzburg Festival, the most known one, they are continuing their cooperation with the company led by a Russian of Greek background. We wrote to them with a message to stop their cooperation, but they published at least something like their condemnation of the aggression, although they didn't name the aggressor state. Nothing has changed so far. More to the point, we offered to them to come up with a special concert, for example, our symphony orchestra, and they rejected the idea. They said that their program has been filled for three years to come, and there is no spot for the Ukrainian orchestra. So we cannot, at this point, ask for a slot instead of the Russian projects. Our position is to broaden the dialogue. You were talking about the support of your ministry, of, the, of our Ukrainian artists abroad. How do you implement uh, cooperation with the world famous artists and cultural persons to promote the Ukrainian culture? Personally, of course, the work is going on. Peter Gelb, for example, one of the most known figures in the opera, opera world. We are thinking about the residence place at the Metropolitan Opera for the Ukrainian actors and uh, fig figures. For example, they might also order a Ukrainian opera. The same work is done by our colleagues in Warsaw. We are cooperating, and I'm not going to spill the beans here with different actors and singers on a number of projects. A lot of projects have taken place. You've seen video clip of antibodies group and there are a lot of uh, avenues for this cooperation to be sustainable. One of project is a good thing, but what we need is systemic and sustainable cooperation that must be promoted. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. We have been talking to Helena Grigorenko, Deputy Minister of Culture and Information Policy of Ukraine. Thank you. Let me remind you that the next briefing will take place at 14.30. We'll be talking about Air Force of the Armed Forces.